Good evening, everybody. Kind of a warm winter evening here in Pittsburgh. So what we're going to try to do is uh, do a little bit of uh, oh, instruction or illustrations of how you can really get yourself set up in the high probability trades. And so that's using our 12 major signals with gaps. And the reason that we like to use gaps is because most people that you hear as far as investment advisors say stay away from gaps because you don't know what they're doing when they gap things around. Candlestick signals and gaps are your best friend. The reason for that is that we understand what these signals are telling us. They're setting up for high probability reversals. And then a gap just confirms that. So essentially what we're going to do is just learn the simple logic that's incorporated into the gaps. And we're going to use it using the uh, uh, basically the 12 major signals. So I'm going to just kind of run through this fairly quickly uh, just to give everybody a review and some of the new people that aren't familiar with the 12 major signals. But the uh, <coughs> again, these are the uh, 12 major signals, and I'll try to illustrate some of them. But more importantly, uh, show why they kind of confirm uh, that there's been a, a change of investor sentiment. Uh, yes, we are being recorded tonight. All right, so a gap in Japanese terminology or a window occurs when there's no price trading in the same area or there's a, a definitely a, a space between the trading range of yesterday to the trading range of today, whether on the bullish side or the bearish side. And it essentially tells you there's been a tremendous change of or a, a increase or decrease of investor sentiment. And so there's the gap up at the top. There's a candlestick signal followed by a gap down at the top. There's the gap up from a signal in the oversold condition, or there's a gap down and a signal in the oversold condition. Whoops, I went way too fast there. Two of these basically show force. When you see that candlestick reversal signal and then a gap up, that tells you not only was there a change of investor sentiment, but they're really anxious to change that investor sentiment. Or if you see it, that uh, investor or that reversal signal at the top followed by a gap down, that tells you that indecision up, up at this point. When they gap it down, they tell you there's some strength behind that uh, new indecision, or which is now new decision. Two of them show exhaustion. When you see a gap up in the overbought condition, this goes back to the very simple concept of the graphics that the Japanese rice traders provided for us was to show us what usually happens in investor sentiment. And that is very simple. Where do most people buy? They buy exuberantly at the top. Where do most people sell? They usually panic sell at the bottom. <clears throat> so that gap up in the overbought condition gives you one clear indication. You start watching for, for a, a reversal. On the other hand, when you see a gap down in the oversold condition, where do most people sell? They panic sell at the bottom. If we can see a reversal signal setting up, the probabilities become pretty ex ex or extremely strong. There's going to be a, uh, a, a candlestick uh, or a, a trend reversal. Joe, uh, yeah, there we've on our website there we it illustrates all the uh, all the all the signals. <coughs> Excuse me, I've still got this frog in my throat. Um, so this makes trading very simple. If we see a gap up in the oversold condition, it's time to buy. If we see a gap up in the overbought condition, it's usually time to start taking profits. So that first one, where the gap up at the top, if we know what the signals represent, such as a doji, and a doji for you new folks is where they open and close right at the same range or same level. And there's four basic dojis, the star doji, which is just a small trading range, a long-legged doji, which means it was big, indecisive trading during the day, and they closed it right at the same level. 
the Dragonfly Doji opens at the top, trades down, and looks like a Dragonfly. And they, they ex ex uh, describe the Gravestone Doji as warriors coming out of camp, going into battle. By the end of the day, they're beaten back into camp, leaving their dead all over the field, thus the Gravestone. But they all represent one thing, and that's indecision between the bulls and the bears. And if those, that, those signals occur at the appropriate place of a trend, that means you've got a high probability there's going to be a reversal coming on. Now, a derivative of the uh, doji is a spinning top. It's the same thing, but it just has a little bit bigger body. It looks like a spinning top. Uh, is the dragonfly more bullish than the grave? No, they're all, they all represent the same thing. Um, and it all depends on which whether that those dojis occurred at the bottom of a trend or at the top of the trend. Uh, again, these are one of the these are part of that twelve major signals. There's fifty or sixty signals in the Japanese candlestick universe. But through the years, not through the years, through the first couple of years that I started using them, I discovered that the twelve that we've kind of pointed out occur 99% of the time. The other ones don't occur often enough to waste your t mental time and energy trying to learn them. However, I always recommend people go back and review them just visually. You don't have to learn what they do or uh, all you have to do is recognize that they're a signal so that if you happen to see one during a chart pattern, at least you know that's a signal. Let me go back and uh, get more clarification um, of what they do. So. There are some very simple rules that the Japanese rice trader provide for each of the signals. For example, if you see a doji at the top, it's time to sell. If you see a doji at the bottom, it's time, either you need to see a, a bullish confirmation, otherwise the Japanese rice traders say the weight of the market could continue to push the market down. Always take heed when you see a doji because that means there is decision between indecision between the bulls and the bears. And this is the one that makes us tons of money. The trend, we usually move in the direction of how they open it the next day after a doji. Now, I use the term next day. That's for any time frame, whether you're trading off a one-minute chart, a 10-minute chart, a weekly chart, or a monthly chart. Uh, candlesticks are what they call fractal. They work in any time frame. So if I see an uptrend, a lot of people, uh, and I've just done a video on when is it time to sell. And with the most simplest of all the sell signals, sell indications are if you're in an uptrend your stochastics in the overbought condition and you see a gap up in the overbought area start looking for selling and what do we know about the simple rule of a doji it's usually going to move in the direction of how they open it after a doji so if it opens lower the next day in the overbought condition after gapping up that's a pretty good indication it's time to take profits now also on my charts for you new folks you can see there's not very many indicators on here. We've got the red line, which is the 200-day simple moving average. The blue line is the 50-day simple moving average. The gray line on here is the 20-day simple moving average. And this black line is the most important one of all. This is what we call the T line. This is the 8 exponential moving average. And a very simple concept and a very profitable concept. If you see a candlestick buy signal and a close above the T line, you can stay long until you see a candlestick sell signal and a close back below the T-line. Conversely, if you see a candlestick sell signal and a close below the T-line, you can stay short until you see a candlestick buy signal and a close back up above the T-line. <coughs> With the caveat that the further away you move from the T-line, the higher the probability it's going to come back and test it. The T-line is essentially like a, like a Fibonacci number. It's a natural number of human nature. So when you add the fact that you can see the graphic depiction of human investor sentiment, uh, which is the candlestick signals, and you add the T-line, which is kind of a natural uh, support and resistance level of human nature, you combine those two and you've got a very powerful combination of uh, when your trend stays in, uh, in progress. Does a gap include the wick? Uh, it usually does, but in this case, as we can see, it closed right here. Next day, they gapped it up, and I can't see well enough to see whether that actually filled the gap. But essentially, what you had up here was a doji. So 
Um, yeah, you'd like to see the open space, but the fact that they gapped this up, brought it down, whether they filled this gap or not, you've got to still remember, they gapped this up in the overbought condition and then, then formed a, a, a sell signal. That just represents that exhaustion up, up at, here at the top. Again, if they open it lower the next day, you start taking profits. And it's even more, uh, more compelling when you can add other indicators or other uh, reasons that you might be seeing a sell signal. For example, if you were buying down here, supported off the 50, where do you think your next target is going to be? Probably up here at the 200-day moving average. And if they gap it up and do an indecisive uh, day right there at the 200, the fact that they traded it lower the next day told us exactly what was happening. That was the exhaustion up here. And then we had confirmed selling. <coughs> Excuse me again. Got to make, make my scotch that much stronger. And so we were in Scotty not too long ago. We had the fry pan bottom. We had our <coughs> what we call the bobble. <coughs> Excuse me. Which is once it hits the first resistance level, notice it pulled back, but it didn't pull back very decisively. That's again represented by the investor uh, or the dojis telling you there's investor sentiment is at an equilibrium or indecisive. So the pullback was indecisive, but there was one main criteria. They couldn't close it below the T line, and you can see how the T line crunch pushed it back up through that resistance level, which basically told us they weren't selling it off. And if they weren't going to resist at the 50, where do you think the next target was? Up here at the 200. Well, they gapped up, but they didn't do a sell signal. They went right through the 200. They gapped up again and did a doji. That told us any weakness up here. And notice how far away we are from the T-line at that point. It's time to take profits. They're probably going to come back and at least test uh, the T-line area. All right, so that's the, the uh, gap up in the overbought condition. The other one is the gap down from a uh, signal in the overbought condition, which basically kind of confirms our simple rule of a doji. They're going to move it in the direction of how they open it after a doji. So if you're up in the overbought condition, you've moved a little bit away from the T-line, and they open it lower the next day, where's your first likely target? Back to the T-line. Is it going to bounce and head back up in our J-hook pattern like here? We don't know. Why take the risk? You close it out. You can always buy it back on the pattern of a J-hook. Now, that's always helped me. This is all kind of the process <clears throat> that helped me get my emotions out of my trading because that's our biggest fupa for most, I say ours, most investors' biggest fupa is their own emotions. And so if I own something like this, I had two... Two emotions. First of all, if this was the one that was going to make me rich, I wasn't going to take profits because what if I took profits at some point and then it turned right around and skyrocketed without me? Boy, would I look stupid. The other side is, I forgot what the other side was. I was reading about the hot toddy. Um, oh, that if I did sell here, and then it turned around and went back up. My first thought was, oh, they're not going to fool me. They're not going to get me out and then get me back in and then take me right back down again. I'm not that stupid. Well, at least now I can see what type of patterns are forming at these levels. So if I see that gap down from a doji, I know there's a force trying to sell off. I want to be out of that position until I see the next buy signal. <clears throat> Uh, yep, I've tried the whiskey and uh, honey a few times, sometimes without the honey. All right, so again, human emotions. Where do most people sell? They panic sell at the bottom. If we see a signal at the bottom and we see it gap up the next day, this is what we call your best friend. Anytime you see a doji in the oversold area and they gap it up, you want to be buying immediately because not only is the probability that you're going to be in an uptrend, it's probably going to be a fairly strong uptrend. 
So we've got <clears throat> a lot of people say, well, what are the best signals? Or which ones are the strongest ones? So again, we've kind of narrowed it down to the 12 major signals, six strong or six buy signals and six sell signals. And a lot of people say, well, which ones are the best out of that? And the answer is they're all pretty good. I mean, we've already refined them from the other 50 or 60 out there, but they're all pretty good because this month it might be the doji is a good reversal one. Next month on our bottom it might be the hammer signal. So it's all based upon what the nature of the market itself is doing. Ah, uh, yes. I usually get out immediately. If I didn't get out on the doji, I've got that simple rule. If it opens lower, close out the position. And again, that's all based on the probabilities. The probabilities over the last 400 years say if you see a doji in the overbought condition and they open it lower the next day, close it out immediately. That tells you that they've finally hit the, uh, hit the top. Um, uh, let's see. So anytime I see that doji, I mean the doji becomes the alert. If they gap it up the next day, again, a lot of people say, well, I don't like to buy a stock that's up 3, 5, 10, 15, 20, 30 percent. You do if it's following this candlestick signal. You've got that doji hammer, and they gap it up, and they gap it up and start trading above the T line. That's that much more confirmation. Oh, China opens in 11 minutes. Okay. So, anyways, this becomes your perfect setup when you see a doji followed by a gap up. The probabilities are not only great that you're going to be in an uptrend, but it's going to be a strong uptrend. Or if you see any other pattern. This is a doji followed by a bullish engulfing signal. That's what we call our left-right combo. A very, very high probability uh, reversal. And then if they gap it up the next day, that definitely confirms there has been a reversal. Is best friend signal stronger if it occurs above the moving averages? No. The moving averages, we're not buying or selling the moving averages. We're using the moving averages as indicators and using the moving averages are going to act as support and resistance. We're buying the signal itself. Now, if they occur on a major moving average, like this one off the 50 up through the T-line, yeah, that's just that much more confirmation um, uh, that there has been a reversal. Anytime you see those dojis in the oversold area and they start gapping it up, especially right here, you're going to be in a strong uptrend. Faster, slow, slow stochastics. And again, the stochastics are not what you're trading. They're just an indication to tell you where you are in the trend. Obviously, a candlestick buy signal occurring in the overbought condition doesn't mean very much. Or a candlestick sell signal occurring in the oversold condition doesn't mean very much. You want to see them occurring in the right conditions of the, of the trend. So. This is where you can get ready for, in this case, we had a J-hook pattern setting up. And the confirmation was we saw this little Morningstar doji gap up, told us that if we took our profits over here, this was time to get back in over here. The moving average, the T-line is the eight exponential moving average. Hot ginger ale, all right, I've been drinking all the cold ginger ale. All right, so the hammer signal again, one of your 12 major signals. Anytime you see that hammer signal followed by a gap up, especially down here in the oversold area, very strong uptrend. Or if you see that gap down in a hammer, remember, that gap down in the oversold condition is telling us that's where the, all the panic selling is going on. And a lot of people will say, well, where do you grab for the fallen knife? Well, that's what the candlestick signals do for you visually, is they tell you when, when there's been a change of investor sentiment at at a reversal point. Oops, did we see that one? And this is what you call an abandoned baby. That's your one day island reversal. They gap it down in the oversold condition. In this case, they did a signal. Now, this wouldn't be a signal had it closed down here somewhere. But the fact that they did a signal, which was a doji hammer type signal, very simple. If they open up positive the next day, that gap down told us to start looking for a buy signal. The fact that they gapped it up the next day showed you not only was there a change of investor sentiment, 
but that change of investor sentiment was being now reversed with a, with good strength. <coughs> you have plenty of doctors in the room. Um, can you elaborate on the stochastic as an indication where, where yeah, my stochastics are set at 12.33. I'm a swing trader, so most of my trades last anywhere from 2 to 10 trading days. But the stochastics are just an indicator that show you where you are kind of in a trend. So if they're down below 20, it means you're in an oversold condition. If they're above 80, you're in an overbought condition. So a lot of people say, well, do we start selling when we get to the overbought condition? You do if you see a candlestick sell signal and a close below the T line. Otherwise, as you can see, the stochastics can stay in the overbought condition for months as long as there is, hasn't been a reversal uh, signal. <clears throat> Would a gravestone doji as an abandoned baby make a difference? A gravestone doji would be your ultimate inverted hammer signal, and I'll get to that here in a little bit. But again, whenever you see a doji, no matter what it is, it's telling you there's indecision between the bulls and the bears, and the, they're usually going to move the direction and in the uh, direction or move the trend in the direction of how they open it after a doji. <clears throat> For intraday trading, what settings? I do the exact same settings. All I do is move my charts to a one minute three minute, five minute, 10 minute uh, combination, but they're all the same parameters. Uh, yes, I used to trade, they trade the E-minis off a one minute, three minute, 10 minute chart combination. I trade the commodities during the day off a 10 minute chart, then my entry is based on a five minute and a one minute uh, uh, entry. And I can kind of show you some of those here when we go to the live charts. So the inverted hammer, I'm sorry, the hanging man is like a hammer signal, but it's at the top of the trend. And then if they gap it down the next day, that's confirmation that, that this hanging man has now told you that there's some sellers starting to come in. And if they open it lower, the sellers have taken over. Or your piercing signal. Piercing signal has a little difference than a bullish engulfing signal. It gaps down below any of the previous day's trading and then closes more than halfway up this candle. That's the, uh, that's the big criteria for candlestick analysis from the Japanese rice traders is the number two. The tail is usually two times greater than the body and a shooting star, a hanging man, a hammer. And I forgot what the other one is. Um, inverted hammer. Or if you've got a piercing signal. It closes more, it opens below any of the previous day's trading, then closes more than halfway up this candle. Then if you see a gap up following that, that signal, it tells you now you're in an uptrend. The bigger that gap, the more compelling that there's been a change of investor sentiment and new force coming into the new trend. Um, yeah, you probably couldn't trade the... Uh, the uh, the minis right now. Um, you enter after the price crosses the 8 MA or at the start of the day. I usually, the, remember, our first criteria is the signal itself. The 8 exponential moving average is your first confirmation, or your T line is your first confirmation. And remember, the further away we are from the T line, the more likely it's going to come back up and test it. So that still makes my confirmation of my signal, my first criteria, then I see what it does once it gets to the T-line. So the opposite of the piercing signal is your dark cloud, and that's a gap up above any of the previous day's trading and closes more than halfway down this candle. And if you see that dark cloud in the overbought condition and they gap it down the next day, that tells you there's now been a change of investor sentiment. Shooting star looks like a shooting star. Again, the tail two times greater than the body. You're up in the overbought condition. It, in this case, they closed it up here, and they opened, I'm sorry, they just gapped it down the next day. So that's like your abandoned baby. <coughs> Excuse me. So it was time to get out. Notice how, again, how far away you had gotten from the T-line. So as soon as they open it lower, you close out your position because the probabilities are pretty strong. They're going to take it down from there. So anytime I see that little shooting star followed by a gap down, in this case, a gap down below the 50 and the T-line tells you you want, definitely want to be out of this trade if you happen to be in it 
and or you want to start going short. Um, do you still follow candlestick rules on these crazy days? Yes. Because remember, candlestick signals are just merely the cumulative knowledge of everybody buying and selling during a particular time frame. And I mean, human nature still works the same way, whether you're trading off a one-minute chart, a 10-minute chart, or a, a weekly chart. Doesn't make any difference whether the hanging man, the shooting star, the hammer, or the inverted hammer have a white body or a black body. The, more, the important criteria is that the small body and the tail two times greater than the body. Um, if the gap up is right into the major moving averages, do you wait? For confirmation that is breaking through. No, if I see a candlestick buy signal, I don't see one. <clears throat> I'm trying to find one that. Uh, no, I'm still buying the signal. If I see the signal in the oversold condition and it gaps up from that signal, I'll watch to see what it does at the first resistance level. But more than likely, the signal itself. Again, the signal itself is what we're trading. Everything else is just a confirmation. Um, it was three minutes uh, daily. Has helped. Okay. Uh, shooting star is at the top of a trend. The hammer is down at the bottom of a trend. I don't see a hammer just yet. Same thing with uh, the inverted hammer. The inverted hammer is at the bottom of a trend where the shooting looks like a shooting star, which would be up at the top of the trend. So an inverted hammer is kind of the uh, warning of the that the bulls are stepping in. And I usually describe it as the bears are happy, the bears are happy, the bears are happy. The bears are still happy. Then all of a sudden, the bulls step in again, and the bears are nervous. But by the end of the day, they closing back down near the lower end of the trading range and the bears are nervous but they're relieved next day they open up positive the bears say shoot the bulls are still here get me out of this trade so <clears throat> the inverted hammer is probably the least of the 12 major signals as far as frequency however it's probably one of the strongest as far as percentage probabilities of being correct that if you see an inverted hammer and it opens positive the next day the probability, and again, this is unofficial. This is just my observations through the years and my profitability through the years. But if you see an inverted hammer and it opens and trades positive the next day, the probability is probably 95% or greater that you're going to be in an uptrend. Now, this also makes very good stop-loss criteria for candlestick signals. If you will take my word for it that 95% of the time, if it opens positive after an inverted hammer down in the oversold area, that you're going to be going positive. The other side of that is, where should this not ever trade? It should not ever come back down through this level. If it does, it's not working. You close out the position immediately. The difference between a light candle and a dark candle, I'm sorry, this is that's the basic basics of candlesticks, is if it opens here and closes above where it opens, it creates a bullish candle or a white candle. If it opens here and closes below where it opens, it creates a dark candle. Now that doesn't necessarily mean the price is up or down for the day. It's just telling you where the open and the close has occurred. And that's the most important factor from the Japanese rice traders is the combinations of those uh, bullish and bearish signals are created by where they open and the close. Those are the important final decisions of each day, where they open it and where they finally close it. You wait for the day's trade is complete to determine the direction of the next day. Pretty much, yes. Um, because, again, that comes back down to that that uh, uh, criteria that Japanese rice traders say is everything in between the open or from where it opens and where it closes, any trading during the day is just noise. The important factor is where do they close it. <coughs> Okay, let me uh, zip along here. Let's see, what do we do? The inverted hammer, inverted hammer. And then also you can add extra criteria or confirmation. 
If you see an inverted hammer or any signal occurring in the oversold area and it's right on a major moving average, the big advantage that we um, have is that we can see exactly what's going on in investor sentiment at important technical levels. Somebody asked me a while back, how many days does it take for you to confirm that your trend is reversed? And the answer is zero. If we see a signal and it confirms the next day, we're, we can be buying immediately. And usually that's still in the area where there's tons of negative uh, comments or sentiment out there about a trend. But the signals themselves tell you exactly what the investor decisions are at those levels. So <clears throat> the moving averages act as support and resistance. And that's a whole different uh, uh, demonstration. But we can see exactly what those signals are at those levels. And then we know what type of force is going to be. Uh, China up 3%. Ah, okay. We'll have to keep an eye on that. All right, so another major signal is what we call the bullish harami. And that's in Western terminology. Um, oh, J. Uh, uh, hammer at the bottom. I don't know. Let's see. Whoops, I've lost where. Third slide, third candle from left is inverted hammer at the bottom of a gap down. How do you look at that? Oh, this one? Well, notice where your stochastics are. They aren't in the oversold area. Much different than where the stochastics are over here. So again, just because there's a candlestick formation that looks like a signal, it's not necessarily a signal unless it's occurring in the right conditions of the uh, uh, of the trend. When to use the EMA and when to uh, the simple moving averages or the major moving averages, the eight exponential moving averages, what we use for the T line. And uh, whether you want to use simple or that's up to each person. We just have been very successful using the eight exponential moving average. Bob, I will get to your answer. If you buy the gap up, won't the gap eventually be be uh, filled? Yes, we'll get to that. Uh, so your ultimate inverted hammer is the Greystone Doji. Again, if it gaps up the next day, the probabilities are extremely strong. You're going to be in an uptrend. All right, whoops, we were working on the bullish harami. The bullish harami is the inside day. It just tells you the selling has stopped. You're looking for bullish confirmation or the selling has stopped and they gap it up the next day telling you not only has the selling stopped but the new buying has come in with great uh, great energy obviously the opposite is the bearish uh, harami a bearish inside day which is they open it below the previous day's close and they close it above the previous day's open so the body is within the body of the previous day and that pretty much tells you that the selling has stopped. I'm sorry, the buying has stopped. And if they open it lower the next day, that's confirmation that they're, they've changed the direction. So you see a bearish harami followed by a gap down. <clears throat> tells you what they've done after that decision. So there's other, the other major signals, uh, uh, like the morning star signal is a three-day pattern. Big down day at the bottom of the trend, the day of indecision, the third day closes more than halfway up this candle. And if they gap it up the third day after that doji, the further they close it up above this halfway point of this candle, and in this case in the oversold condition, and they close it above the T line, that's a very good uh, oh, uh, confirmation that there's definitely been a change of investor sentiment. Uh, what is the psychology of a harami? It just tells you the buying or the selling has stopped. I mean, you can see that, that the trend has kind of quit. All right, the strongest of all the uh, 12 major signals are the kickers, is the kicker signal. If you're in a downtrend, this is where the gap is, right in the signal itself. 
The previous day opens here, closes here. Next day they gap it up and move in the opposite direction. <coughs> uh, tells you there's been a dramatic change of investor sentiment. Or the bearish kicker signal, you have an uptrend. And this was always me. I'm in an uptrend, I'm happy, I'm happy. Next day there's news and they gap it down at or below the previous day's open and start going the opposite direction. Back before candlesticks came along, I would sit there and say, oh, man, if they would just take it up one more time and let me out, I'd be so happy. Now I discovered that if you see the, in an uptrend and they gap it down the next day, the sellers are in there pretty strong. There's only one thing you want to do, and that's close out the position as fast as possible. The longer you hold on to it, What's our hopeful rationale? Well, I should have sold it up here. I can't sell it now because it could move back up. Then it goes down here. Say, up. Oh, I should have sold it up here or up here. I can't sell it now because it might go back up. But at the end of the day, you finally sell it out down here. Now I know if I, it kicks down, I want to be out of that trade immediately. Uh, yes, there's very, yes, I use stop, uh, stop losses. When I get in the overbought condition, very simply, I use the previous day's open as my stop. Because if I'm in the overbought condition and I'm starting to move away from the uh, T-line, if they have enough force to move it back down below the previous day's open, that means the bears are starting to take control and want to take my profits. That's right. Surely we'll move back up. So anytime I see a kicker signal, I know that there's been a dramatic change of investor sentiment, and that dramatic change of investor sentiment usually results in a very strong price move. And if they do a kicker signal where they gap it up, that's much more compelling that there's going to be a strong uptrend. So anytime I see a kicker signal, I'm buying immediately because I know what would be happening if they were heading in one direction and gapped up and went the other direction. As soon as I see that, <clears throat> and I may not see that by any scans, during the day, but in the chat room, somebody might say, hey, look at Mako. They've, uh, they've gapped up and they're trading positive. I look at that chart and it looks like it's setting up for a kicker signal. I'm buying immediately. The problem with that is I've got to scramble around and see where I've got money or uh, sell something to, to buy it. The other side of that is the flutter kicker signal, which is you have a downtrend. The next day they gap it up and they do a doji. So what's that already told, told us? What does that tell us? Told us. Yeah, I believe that. They've gapped it up. And what do we know about a doji? We know it's going to move in the direction how they open it after a doji. So if I see this set up, I know that I can get my money ready for the open the next day, that if it opens positive, I know it's going to trade positive, which means if I took out this little doji, I've got a kicker signal if I took out that little flutter. So a flutter kicker signal gets you ready or be prepared for that signal. Kick, bearish kicker signal, anytime I see them gap down below the previous day's open, I want to go short. Anytime I see a gap up, kicker signal, I want to be buying immediately. So that's kind of the gaps. Uh, it just puts us in high percentage uh, situations when you're using the signals. And it also puts you in high uh, percentage situations when you're using the patterns. Big fry pan bottom, one of the Japanese strong price patterns. What do we want to see coming out the other side? Great enthusiasm. And what's represented by the great enthusiasm? A gap up the next day. How long do we own this one? Until we see a sell signal and a close back below the T-line. On the opposite side, a dumpling top, the opposite of a fry pan bottom. When is all the uh, exuberant selling going to go on? When you see that doji gap down. That tells me this is now in a very strong downtrend. So <coughs> gaps are great for improving our target projections. Um, let's see. If I have skipped your uh, uh, question, don't worry. I'll scroll back up and catch them as soon as we're done here. So somebody was asking, don't gaps get filled? usually, but if I'm buying on this gap right here, I don't care what's, when it's going to get filled. I'm trading this trend right here. Do gaps get filled? Eventually, they do, like today in the Dow. 
they came and they filled this little gap before turning around and bouncing up a little bit. So when we started analyzing what was happening, which is much easier when you have the graphics of candlesticks, is we could see what was happening and we had a trend channel. When were we buying? When it hit the bottom of the trend channel. When would we sell? When we saw that they weren't going to go through the top. And how did we know this was a buy? Because there was a bullish harami telling us the selling had stopped. Next day, they told us the buying had started. Got up here, hit the top of the resistance, or resistance level. How did we know they were selling? Because we had a bearish harami. And what did that tell us? Is the buying had stopped. They weren't going through this level. Where was the next likely target? This is what, what where people I see people saying, oh, this market's terrible. This market is great if right up here you started selling out long positions and going short because what was our next target? Right here at this level. So what did we want to see at this level? Bullish confirmation, but we didn't. And obviously we're still sitting in, in uh, 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 short positions right now. Um, so that's the analyzing the Dow, and that goes back to, I forget who had asked, don't gaps get filled? Yes, they do, but it might be three days later, it might be three weeks later, it might be three months later, it might be three years later. We're not trading on the basis that this gap may get filled. We're trading this trend right here, and then sometime down in the future, we can see whether that is now going to become a, an effective target. So... <clears throat> Knowing that we're in a downtrend, we can take a look at charts that tell us that there's a lot of selling going on. Why was this short recommended? Because when it got back up to the 50, it did a little kicker signal to the downside, and the market was starting to roll over. So this became a high probability that what was our first target? Probably this wedge right here. But we didn't know whether it was going to support there or not. At least we knew we had a couple of days of a trade to the downside. And how long do we hold this short? until we see a candlestick buy signal. Uh, you, yeah, a flutter kicker can work intraday if you've got something that trades very volatilely. There's a lot of signals or patterns that won't work intraday because of the continuous trading. Usually a, uh, a gap or a kicker signal, those type of things are going to be where you've got a time frame from one close to the next open. So if you're trading the... Uh, a Forex, for example, which is a continuous trading market, you're not going to see gaps or uh, uh, kicker type signals. It's, they're going to be uh, more of the, the pattern type uh, reversals. Uh, let's see, we recommended AXLL the other day because what do we have right here? A left right combo right on the 20, stochastics rolling over, and what happened the next day? They gapped it down. We were shortened immediately. And a lot of people ask or say, well, couldn't it have bounced right back up? Say, yes, it could have bounced back up. But the probabilities are that if you see a left-right combo, <coughs> very sell signal, stochastics rolling over, and they gap it down, they're going to keep taking it down further. That's the whole point of candlestick analysis is what are the probabilities based upon human nature of which direction prices are going to move based upon what we're looking at as far as what the signals are telling us. We also shorted, whoops, this one. There was a hanging man followed by a gap down. And where did it occur? Right here at the T line. And what do we have? A little slow curve. This one has worked out well for us. R-L-Y-P. That looked like a great one breaking out to the upside, but it failed. And then we had a bearish doji sandwich, which is a down day, a doji, and another down day. So the doji sandwiched in between. And then they gapped it down kind of through this support level, putting us in the right place at the right time. We recommended LJPC as a short. There was your doji gap down. That's your best friend. And where did it gap down? Through the 200 as a support. All we have to do is stay short. So even if we're in long positions, we need to know when to get out. And this is one that we thought would be a what we call a bobble, where it came up, hit the resistance level. Notice it couldn't close back below the T-line. It was just about ready to break out. But then what did we have? We had a left-right combo. It closed right on the T-line. What did we need to see the next day to stay in this trade? It had to open positive and trade positive, showing the T-line was acting as support. 
when it opened lower, basically we had a bearish left-right combo followed by a little gap down below the T-line. That told us they weren't going in this way. Close out the position immediately. Okay, so that's basically how we used gaps to kind of project which direction we're going. And uh, so I will take the questions here. But first, let me do this. Pat wanted to put out a, oh, what happened here? Put out a special. This is on our gaps. Uh, I think that should have come in somewhere down there. Uh, if you look at that, it's it's about a couple hours of how to use gaps effectively. I think she's got it in for like a half price special. So take a look at that. And I'm not sure whether they've got a free 30-day trial with that uh, included or not. So all right, let me uh, let's see. Um, yes, it is great. I've watched classes of you. I've learned. Oh, uh, I'm reading Kathy at 837. <clears throat> Through the years, I've had people come back to each session. I mean, I would see them in Houston. And I would, uh, they'd come back time after time after time. And I finally asked a couple of them. I said, don't you get bored with this stuff? I mean, there's nothing changed in it for the last 400 years. They said, every time we see it, we pick up something more. It's just common sense. So, um, so Kathy, that's, that's about right. Every time, and the reason I like doing it is it keeps reminding me of where the strong signals and patterns are. Um, has, it refreshes my memory. Um, uh, do I use the following candle in relation to the doji or any other signal as my indication to enter on a bullish or bearish market, or do I wait until the opening of the following day? Uh, no. If, let's see, I don't know whether I'll be able to get back to it or not. But if you see a doji in the oversold area, and remember, you know which direction the price is going to move based upon how they open it. If you're in an oversold area and you see a doji, the next day they gap it open open because the probabilities are extremely strong it's going to uh, keep uh, extremely strong that you're going to be in an uptrend uh, I use tra uh, very simple stop losses the logic that is built in the candlestick analysis is just as easy to place your stop losses and it's just basically uh, we can do a whole session we we can do a whole session on stop losses uh, for the members one night, um, that if you're buying based upon what should happen based on that uh, signal or pattern, you can also put your stop loss at a place that the price shouldn't move back down through. So through the years, I hate to think it's been over 40 years that I've been investing, you hear every money manager say, cut your losses short, let your profits run. And in that 40 years, I've never heard a single one of them tell you how you cut your losses short and let your profits run. It's very simple when you're using candlestick analysis. It gets you out of the bad trades very quickly and keeps you in the good trades. Um, if a candlestick buy signal occurs but not in the oversold condition, you pass on the trade. Uh, not necessarily. That's sometimes you have a pattern, uh, like a J hook pattern. But yeah, more than likely, I would rather prefer to buy a buy signal in the oversold condition. But you got to also remember, if your market has been moving up for the last three months, you're not going to find very many stocks that are in oversold conditions. Or if they are in oversold conditions, you probably shouldn't be buying them because they're probably being sold for some reason when the market was moving up. So there, there's going to be buy signals when you're not in the oversold that might be producing a J hook pattern or a fry pan bottom breakout. Um, after the, the stop philosophy you just described only happens after close of the day. Uh, going into the close, if you can see that you're going to close more than halfway down a candle that was the buy signal, yeah, you're going to close out the position. <laughs> um, a lot of 
a lot of times where the you're in an uptrend and the stock sells off hard, everybody says, oh, should we be selling? My answer is wait to the end of the day because more than likely, remember, every trend doesn't go straight up or every trend doesn't go straight down. You need to see what it does by the end of the day. Did I miss where you explained what a kicker signal is? Or is it just a gap and an open in the opposite direction established trend? Uh, no, it's a... Uh, you usually want to see a big dark candle. Let me see if I can find it. That's not it. The previous candle is a dark candle. The next day they gap it up at or above the previous day's open and go in the opposite direction. So the, the gap up has already occurred from the previous day's close to gapping up above the previous day's open. Um, uh, John, I see, uh, and I've, you know, I wrote book number three on the emotions, how to get your emotions out of your trading. If you just follow what candlestick signals do, and remember, candlestick signals aren't something that are just off the cuff. There's one basic rule on Wall Street. If something doesn't work, it disappears pretty quick. Candlestick signals have been around for the last 400 years. And the reason a lot of people don't know about them is just they weren't really brought to anybody's attention. And I started learning them 40 years ago, I think it is. And I was, the, I was a stockbroker. I was the worst investor in the world, and I was a stockbroker. I got out of the business because I realized that the brokerage firms didn't and the analysts didn't have any more idea what made stocks go up or down than anybody else. Then when candlesticks came along, it just made sense. And the philosophy behind that is that prices don't move based upon, a fu upon fundamentals. Prices move based upon the perception of fundamentals. And that's all that the candlestick signals are. It's the graphic depiction of what's going on in human nature. Uh, let's see. How much time do you give to a signal to establish itself before you decide to buy? Usually just the next day. Because if I'm in early, I've got two things going for me. One, if, if the probabilities of that signal working is strong, I'm in early. If it doesn't work, I'm right back out very quickly uh, because if that negates itself, I've got a very small loss and my, the, my gains are big. So a lot of gap downs today, yes. We didn't know whether that was going to be a gap down and a reversal. <clears throat> Let me see if I can find that. That wasn't it. Didn't know whether, because when we woke up, the, I guess the pre-market futures were down 330 points already. So we knew they were taking the market down. I forget what the net or the... Uh, <coughs> Uh, what the uh, NASDAQ did. But, uh, yes, you had to make a decision. And, again, the reason we went short stuff today was look where the stochastics were. We weren't in the oversold area yet, so that meant there was probably more downside. Um, let's see, the futures are up 18. All right. Not a kicker signal, probably a bullish harami if it opens higher and then closes higher but not above uh, today's open. Uh, KF, I usually don't buy immediately. My immediate might be 30, 40 seconds, might be 4 or 5 minutes, maybe 45 minutes. All depends on what the nature of the market is. So, uh, And what I'm buying, if it's an individual stock because the market is moving up, if it opens positive, I'm ready to buy. But I'll give it a 30 seconds to see if the buying is still coming in. What I don't want to see is a, a open, and then they immediately start selling it off, doesn't tell me there's any buyers there. But then what I do is I just put my buy stop above the open because if they sell it off and then turn around and bring it back up, that tells me the profit taking on that open is over and that they're continuing what they're confirming what the pattern or the signal is telling me. What if you have multiple gap ups in continuous days or gap downs, I think is what we saw in the, uh, in the NASDAQ. Let me see if I can... I don't know whether this will work or not. But as we can see in the NASDAQ, they gapped it down, they gapped it down. Yeah, that just tells you there's a lot of force in that direction. 
let's see. For kickers, the bodies around the doji equals what is description of the size of the bodies? For kickers, bodies around the doji equal what is the description? A kicker usually you want, you want a big down or bearish candle, then they gap it up above the previous day's open and have a big bullish candle. Now, <clears throat> if they're dojis, you're not looking at kicker signals, you're looking at doji reversals. If the candles give you a buy signal or sell signal, it does not matter where the stochastics are. You know, yeah, that's not necessarily true, Greg. Um, the signals are your top priority, but if you see a signal in a halfway up a tr trend, again, if it's not occurring in the right uh, uh, conditions, it's not going to mean as much. If I see a, a candlestick potential reversal signal or a signal in an uptrend versus a candlestick reversal signal at an oversold condition, I'm probably going to go with the one in the oversold condition telling me that trend is just starting. Um, notice how on this chart the stochastics, yeah, there's, yeah, just because your stochastics are in an overbought or oversold area doesn't mean the trend is over. It just means you're now further into the, uh, uh, into the trend. Dow futures up 140. Um, no, I'd still wait to see, um, and now, the futures being up 140 right now doesn't mean a hill of beans. What the futures are about three minutes before the open is where the big money is finally making their decisions. So, <clears throat> I mean, they could be up 140 now, and when you get up in the morning, they could be down 200 points. So, um, if it's opening positive tomorrow, yes, I'd probably be doing some day trading on the basis that I'll probably trade off the 10-minute chart but I, I wouldn't be buying positions to establish positions until I see there is a, a definite reversal signal. Um, is that a gap in the October uh, right here? <coughs> I'm guessing, Bonnie, there's a wee little teeny gap right here. And that's what they came back and filled today. Why aren't the three black crows, three white soldiers made? Because you don't see them very often. Now you don't, uh, you probably, uh, they don't, yeah, they don't show up very often. Not enough to, I mean, you want to recognize them, but uh, you won't see them. The 12 major signals are the ones you're going to see 99% of the time. is you have multiple gaps continue all right okay see this little gap <clears throat> here Bonnie today they came down and they filled that gap they they mean they came back down through the bottom of that gap filled it before bouncing back up let's see what else Uh, <clears throat> I use the one minute and five minute chart. I usually trade off the 10 minute chart. And if my 10 minute chart is starting to show that it's bottoming and starting to come back up, say toward the T line, then I'll flip to my five minute chart to see what the five minute chart is doing. I see if it's doing a reversal signal like it should. And if it is and I'm getting ready to buy, then I flip to my one minute chart because I don't want to see on my one minute chart that we're now up in the overbought condition on the one minute chart and it's about ready to pull back, which means my five minute and my 10 minute chart will start pulling back. I wanna see that there's still buying or it's still trading above the T line on the one minute chart. So it just kind of fine tunes my, my entry. Uh, gaps up, future sooner, how would you trade? Uh, I would first wait to see how, how, much, how long it's gonna stay there. Um, gotta remember, in a downtrend, Usually the first thing in the mornings, what they do is they trade it positive. Then they 
later on they start selling it off. In an uptrend, you usually see them sell it off in the morning and then they can start coming back in the afternoon. So anything that I saw tomorrow on a positive open, I'd give it a few minutes to see what, what they're doing with it after that. Um, and, okay, John, so the, uh, yeah, the futures were up for 16 minutes, so that was people covering uh, shorts. I was selling off. Uh, do world events affect the markets, good or bad? Paul, everything affects the markets. And that's what the candlestick charts tell you, is what the accumulative knowledge of everybody's decision of buying or selling based upon what's, what's happening out there in the world. No, you won't have a kicker signal tomorrow if it opens positive. Have a kicker signal, they would have to open the markets up above today's open. If they're opening up positive, maybe you'll get a bullish harami, but I wouldn't be jumping in just because uh, uh, oh, there's there might be bullish uh, a bullish open. Um, this offer includes membership, but what if we're already members? I don't know the answer to that. You want the coffee up. Uh, you tell me again where to put the stop after a strong uptrend. Stochastics overbought. Yes. Let's see if I have one. Usually if I'm in an overbought condition, I start putting my uh, stop at the previous day's open. Because if it opens positive and has enough strength to come back down through there when I'm up here, that tells me the sellers are in control. <clears throat> when I'm starting to buy, notice they, the Dow had kind of a flutter kicker signal down here, and I was buying, let's say this was a stock, I was buying the next day. If this is the signal that told me the bulls were in control, the Japanese rice traders keep it very simple. Where should they not close? They shouldn't close more than halfway down the candle that told me the bulls were in control. If they did, that tells me the bears are still in control. You close it out. If you're in an uptrend and you're in the overbought area, pick out a logical spot that tells you the trading shouldn't come back to that level. And I usually use the previous days open. Um, uh, Thomas, no, my, uh, my I have very very kind of straightforward money management. Again, because our uh, biggest weakness or our biggest Fupa in trading is our own emotions. If I'm putting on, if I've got a portfolio and I've got 10 equal dollar positions, I keep them equal dollar because I don't want to be, want my emotions in a trade that says, oh, I've put more money in this trade because it's really going to be good. And now that it's not working, oh, man, I'm, I, my intelligence said it should be working, so I'm going to hold on to it for a couple more days. I'm now deciding what to do because of that emotional aspect versus just saying up oh, this unit of my portfolio didn't work close it out and move on to something else should we always wait for pullbacks no nick got to remember if you're buying based on strength the last thing you want to see in a bullish uh, confirmation is weakness because that's telling you there isn't the strength there i would rather be paying up for a stock knowing it's moving in the right direction i'm not trying to buy at the absolute bottom I'm not trying to sell at the absolute top. I'm trying to take as many positive trades as I can with that fat, fat part in the middle. And once I get to where it's a little bit risky at the upside, close out and find another one that's starting to move up again. Um, when is it too high or too risky to buy when a stock is at a high point? Uh, if it's already at a high point and it's just moving up, all you have to tell yourself is you missed that one. Now, if it does a pattern, uh, I'm trying to see if there's something. If it had as a pattern, like a J hook pattern, where it pulled back a little bit and then started back up as a J hook, then you can be buying it, even though it's in a in the higher trading levels. F C E L was not a sell signal; it was just a selling day. 
um, but it did close below the T-line. But you don't have a sell signal or a and a close below the T-line. You just have a close below the T-line. Plus, if you look at the fuel cell uh, chart, your stochastics are still heading up. So I would more consider this just a selling day and an uptrend. Uh, I own fuel cell, and I didn't close it out today. I just had to sit through a bad day. Is an abandoned baby a good signal for intraday trading? You usually don't get an abandoned baby in intraday trading only because it's a gap, and usually you're not going to get too much gaps during, in, during an intraday uh, session. But after a strong uptrend, stochastic is an overbought, where do you put your stops? Yes, previous day is open. <coughs> now, if it gaps up, I don't think I have that. If it gaps up in the overbought area and immediately starts trading higher, then I put my stop at the open because logic says if it goes up and then comes back down through the open, you're going to have some sort of candlestick sell signal, whether it's a shooting star, a doji, maybe a dark cloud, or even a bearish and golfing signal. So anytime you see that gap up in an overbought area, get ready to... to take profits. might not be that day. It might be a couple of days later. But put your stop someplace that says if it comes back through this level, it's creating a sell signal. On the other hand, if it gaps up above the previous day's close and starts trading lower, yes, put your stop at the previous day's close. If it comes back down through there, more than likely you're going to have some sort of sell signal created. Uh, David, I, I, the, I have the advantage of teaching this because every time I get ready to do another presentation, I look at a chart and say, yeah, I knew that. I just forgot about that type of signal or pattern. Um, uh, can you describe a kicker body size? Yeah, the best kicker signal should not have any tails on it as far as the uh, open of the, uh, the bullish day. Now, it can. It still represents the same thing if it has a little tail to the downside. But the true kicker signal is it opens higher and immediately starts trading higher. You go by the blue line on the stochastics. Both lines. Uh, they, one happens to be a fast and slow. Um, some people trade the crosses of the uh, stochastics. I just want to see where they are in general. Oh, I don't know where the support for the S and P is, but it had a the S and P had a gap that it filled, uh, same area as the Dow, uh, right in here. It filled that gap today. Uh, do you use fast slow stochastics? Would gold go down if stocks rise? Probably, because gold is uh, more of an emotional factor. Um, but right now, the gold chart looks, looks pretty good. What about trading options? Options is just a method for buying the stock pattern. So if you see a good stock uh, pattern or signal, you can either be buying the puts if you're like trading options or you can be shorting the stock. So um, and a lot of people say, well, where do you, how do you stop out of an option? <clears throat> an option, you close out that position when the underlying stock is not doing or giving you a sell signal or telling you it's time to get out. Again, the option is only a method for buying the stock. <clears throat> uh, Oh, yeah, okay, all right. Yeah, Walmart has three white soldiers. Again, they don't happen very often. I don't usually trade Walmart because it's usually too slow a mover. Um, oh, Don, I can't right now. Let's see. Well, maybe I can. Hold on. Uh, what was I trading today? I was trading... Uh, I didn't use, I was trading uh, cattle today, 
because as you can see in this uptrend, stochastics up here in the overbought condition, and we had doji, doji, a lot of indecision, and then they gapped it down. So <coughs> I traded this on the basis that when they gapped it down, I didn't, uh, I didn't trade it. I just knew it was weak. But after a while, I could see on the 10-minute chart, this is the 10-minute chart, that there was a support level here. So I just put a sell stop right here. But if they came down through this, they were probably taking it lower. So I sorted it right in here, and then I think I bought it back right about in here because where were we? We were in the oversold area, and we were starting to see the fact that it might come back up to the T-line. Now, I also did that on the uh, hogs. Ooh, I forget where it was, but there was another support level right here, and... I think I did a trade where I shorted it right here because it broke down off on the 10 minute chart. And when I start seeing it get weak like this, then I flip to my five minute chart. I don't know whether this will match up. But my five minute chart said, oh, there's a bearish uh, left right combo. It's just about ready to break this level. So I was ready to short here because the 10 minute chart was confirming. Then I closed it out. And then near the end of the day, it was trading right here, and I put my sell stop here. And got another quick little trade by the end of the day. So anyways, that's how I, and then if I really wanted to fine tune it, uh, usually not with setting stops like this to get into But if I'm looking at something that might be heading back up, I'll look at the 10-minute chart, then flip to the 5-minute chart, and then I'll flip down to the 1-minute chart to see if that's, still confirming the, the five and 10 minute chart. Um, I will be doing videos mostly now on, we're gonna be uh, refreshing all the videos for, for commodity trading here pretty soon, uh, probably over the next couple weeks. So I've got some out there. Commodity trading is very simple because there's less influences on commodities. It's usually just the weather and how much soybeans are being planted or how much cattle is being brought to market, whereas the stock market has tons of things that influence it, like interest rates, what's happening in China, what's happening in uh, Iran, what's happening in the oil market. You've got so many things that influence the, uh, the markets, whereas each commodity has very few things that influence it, it's supply and demand. What stochastic line is red and blue. I don't know. Probably the, the blue is the fast and the red is the slow stochastic. Uh, let's see. Do you trade the patterns that most technicians teach, ascending triangles? I, I trade them because <coughs> I can see what's happening. I can see, uh, yeah, I can see one of, of patterns being set up, but I'm more interested in seeing what happens based upon at the, I get, I get much more clarity by trading those patterns by using the candlestick signals. I can see exactly what's going on at a uh, support and resistance level. Let's see. In a dark cloud as well as a harami, should only the body of the candle be considered or also, no, just the body. Um, yeah, the wicks, the wicks are only considered when you're looking at a shooting star or a hammer signal. What is the ticker signal for the Dow futures? Uh, YM. Oh, yeah. D. E. Anderson already put it in there. Uh, technicians are talking about another bottom for gold. Camel, the only thing I can say about that is let the charts tell you what's happening. You've got so many people out there that have opinions that they bring on TV. The market is the only true indicator. Um, when trading options, how do you put in a stop? Uh, Greg, a lot of brokerage firms will have a contingency order that if you bought a stock and it's heading up and you don't want it to come back down through 50, you can put a contingency order that says 
if this stock comes back down through 50, close out my, my calls. Combo pack is a DV, it's a download. Uh, thank you, Bill. You scan for these candlestick, 12 candlestick setups. If so, um, you can use all our scans are on TradeStation, Ninja Trader, Metastock. I think it's also on Thinkorswim, on TCNet. All our formulas are out there. Uh, um, and I've got them on. Uh, we did a scanning session last night for members showing how you set up your scans. There's approximately 10,000 trading entities out there. If you're new at Candlesticks, it should take you less than 20 minutes each day to identify the best two, three, four, five trades that you want to do the next day or whatever time frame you're trading. If once you get used to it, you can find the best trade signals in probably somewhere between five and 10 minutes each afternoon. Because all you do is once your formulas are all set up, you just click the refresh and it's going to bring up all the signals and patterns for you. Yep, 80-20 on the stochastics. Uh, let's see. Yeah, we've, Jim will have it out soon, I guess. Um, uh, Albert, email Abraham at candlestickforum.com. He can give you the details on how to buy the packages. Or if you go to candlestickforum.com and you go to the products and services link, that will pretty much uh, show you if there's uh, the packages, there's all, I think we got 40 or 50 training videos. And as you can see, the, the presentations aren't very sophisticated, but they're just kind of common sense uh, views of the charts. Isn't the charts, the big boys competing with each other? Uh, it doesn't really matter um, who's buying or selling. A lot of people say, <laughs> oh, it's the amateurs buying the first hour and the pros the rest of the day. My feeling is I don't care who's buying or selling as long as it's moving the price the way we want it to based upon the uh, signals. Is that China market is down 13 tenths of a percent? All right. Uh, uh, Bob, I, the second book I wrote, which was High Profit Candlestick Patterns, the green cover one. That would be the one that I would start with. Now, I wrote one before that that was published by Wiley and Sons called High is it, Profitable Candlestick Trading. That's more generic uh, uh, information. So I recommend people get the High Profit Candlestick Patterns book first. Then... Get the uh, Profitable Candlestick Trading as a second book, just to kind of go backwards and it kind of uh, refreshes and kind of uh, well, kind of confirms the information from the first book. Then the third book, Candlestick for the Profits, Eliminating Emotions, that's the one that everybody should read no matter how sophisticated you think you are. When you use candlesticks, uh, you still got tons of emotions. This kind of just explains how to use them so that you get your emotions out of your trading. Um, can you go over your basics of your options technique? Uh, I don't trade weeklies, William. Only I don't trade deltas. I trade the patterns. Uh, the deltas don't mean a thing, especially if you're trading a fry pan bottom breakout. The delta for that had been lethargic for the last that pattern was lethargic for uh, two, three months, five months, two years. Now all of a sudden it's breaking out. I don't care what the delta was. I want to. I want to be trading the new new price pattern. Uh, if I'm trading an option, it's usually the closest expiration. So right now, I'd be trading uh, if the market wasn't whipping around so much. I'd be trading the Januarys. 
but because we're within two weeks of expiration, I'd probably be doing debit spreads versus calls and puts. Now, again, that's a whole whole option session. Why do you trade commodities? Because uh, commodities are just as easy to identify as far as chart patterns. And got to remember, candlestick signals were created by the most basic of all commodities, and that was rice. And you got to remember, the Japanese rice traders didn't make money or make a fortune uh, trading rice. They became legendarily wealthy trading rice, and that's the most stodgy of all commodities. Isn't that our left-right combo? I don't know which one we were looking at at that time. Oh, I know a left-right combo. This one. It was your left-right, bearish left-right combo. That's why we recommended shorting it on weakness the next day. Which commodities you trade? Uh, there's only 30 commodities at most, I think. <clears throat> You've got the grains. There's four grains. You've got three meats. You've got four sauce, which is cotton, uh, coffee, cocoa, sugar, and you've got the currencies. So you can go through 30 charts of the uh, commodities and currencies in a matter of a minute to see which ones have the best chart setups. Um, Macy's, I uh, yeah, I understand the. Uh, the retailers were acting decently well today. Let me see if I can. But it kind of faded there on the close. But everything faded on the close with the market down practically 400 points. But it's got a nice fry pan bottom set up. And it did trade up above the T-line today. So if the market turned around, I wouldn't be afraid to be buying Macy's. The only thing with Macy's is you'll get a decent percentage return out of it, not anything exorbitant. Oh boy, somebody's asking where the scans on TradeStation. That's an, that's where you're going to have to email Abraham. I don't use TradeStation myself. I use Thinkorswim. Uh, I just know they're there. Um, uh, yes, the scan session. I'm pretty sure it was recorded last night. Yes, Jim was there. Are there any particular signals best for day trading? Not necessarily, because I mean it's just. Uh, I mean, still, if you're if once you learn the twelve major signals, you only got six bullish and six bearish. They're not. It's not like you're learning a whole alphabet. Dow futures up under sixty. All right. You have scanning for stock charts. Oh, I don't know. Now remember. Any of the formulas that we use, if you can say the uh, the uh, signal or pattern, I mean verbally say it, you can write a very simple formula for it. So it's not rocket science. And if you need a formula for any software in the chat room, Ed C can write you any formula. He's written so many formulas. Uh, and if it's something. <coughs> A scan that you want to do, customize, that you're looking for all uh, stocks that are in the oversold area that have formed a long-legged doji and then followed by a gap up through the T-line, he can, he can write it. It's not very difficult. How are commodities priced? Uh, commodities are priced based on how much their, uh, or whatever their value. So if... Uh, if you're buying, I don't know whether how they do it, but if you're buying, let's say, a ton of soybeans for $865.50, you're not paying $865.50. You're buying a contract, and your price you pay is $865.50, and then your profit and loss start from that level, and each tick that it goes up, you're making $10 or $50 or whatever. 
uh, on that. So your your account is either going up or down. But you have a margin to buy one contract of uh, soybeans. You might need twenty three hundred dollars for that uh, to buy that contract. Okay, let me see what do you with options. Would it be at the money, etc. That I meant in regards to Delta. So you want two to four weeks left? Yes. <clears throat> uh, ETFs are just as any. It's just another trading vehicle, and they work just the same way. Um, remember, candlesticks is not for a market or an, or an entity. It's the graphic depiction of human nature for any trading entity. So whether you're trading uh, uh, oh Jerry, I don't know. He'll I, I thought he tried to get a hold of you the other day, and I don't know why you're losing money with PCB. Everybody else is making money. Okay, I'll scroll down. What platform do you display the charts for this webinar? Uh, these charts are from uh, CQG, and you've got just as good charts on any of the other chart services. Unfortunately, I pay like a thousand dollars a month for these charts just because the graphics have always been good, and I've always written, used them for writing books or uh, articles for the uh, for, the, for the papers or for the magazines and that sort of thing. Um, all right. Okay, I think we got most everything. So with that, uh, everybody have a good evening. Yeah, I thought, yeah. CQG is uh, yeah, like $1,000 a month. We'll see everybody bright and early tomorrow morning in the chat rooms. Thank you for coming tonight. We'll see everybody in the morning.